Hey everybody, it's getting that time of year again where we uh, start breaking out the sleds and I thought it might be nice to show some people how to uh, check your throttle position sensor on your sled, make sure it doesn't need a little tune-up. I went riding last weekend and I found that my sled did not like to idle right after start. I had to give it a little blip of throttle to get it up to idle and I thought it was maybe a little boggy. So I came home and I tested my throttle position sensor and I've actually moved it since then. It was sitting at 800 uh, milliamps, not milliamps, but millivolts. Uh, the ideal is 700, but you can actually check this without pulling your clutches or doing anything like that. And that's because you can go over to here. So most guys, they want you to pull your clutches and go down here. Here's your throttle position sensor. They want you to back tap those wires to uh, get your voltages. But if you just relax a little bit and come up here, you can tap them at their connector to the ECM right under the hood. And you can see that's what I've done. I've simply gone and stolen one of the girlfriend's uh, safety pins and you just slide it in there right along the seal and you can actually get in there without damaging the seal. To power the ECM, this, this sled doesn't have a battery, I've simply come over here to the ECM plug and I happen to have a power supply. Uh, you don't need a power supply, you just need some wire and a 12 volt battery and you can do the exact same thing I've done which is come over and plug into the ECM to juice it up. Um, and then to finish this test you need a good multimeter. I'm using a Fluke, I think it's a 87.5 True RMS. And not all these are made the same. Um, I actually originally just grabbed, I had a demo FLIR meter here off my office desk because I thought, well, why not use that? And I uh, was sure it was going to be plenty. But I came to find out it actually doesn't measure millivolts in DC, which makes it useless for this task because you're looking for 0.7 millivolts. Anyways, I've got it all plugged in. I've actually come down and moved this a little bit to get it more in range, but I figured I'd better take a video. So right now the ECM is powered. I have this on here because I forgot to grab, I didn't grab the right alligator clamps and they don't reach or attach. And I come over here and I'm reading 0.634. Now remember, we're looking for 0.7. So we're gonna go down here and twist on this throttle position sensor. Well, you can see even just laying my hands on it has changed. It gets very sensitive. So I'm just going to give it a yank either way. Wee. So I'm moving it all over the place. You can see I can get up to 1.2 volts. But I want to be right at 800. Not 800, sorry, 700. And this is going to be a very sensitive operation. And it's going to change when you tighten the screws. So you're just trying to get it close enough. Look at that. All right, so as you can see, I've got it to within about three thousandth of a millivolt. And what I had to do to achieve that is uh, I had to kind of, you'll notice as you tighten the screws down, it uh, the millivolts will back off in one direction or another. I had to sit at 712, and then that final tightening of the screws dropped at about 10 millivolts. So uh, that's what I had to do. You can also kind of hold it in place or provide tension on it while you tighten those screws down to try and manipulate it in one direction or another. But uh, a couple thousandth, five thousandth is not bad. We're gonna move on from there. Hey guys, I just needed to, uh, this is actually several days after most of this video was shot, but I realized I forgot, sitting down to edit this, I realized I forgot a few key steps that need to be mentioned before the main body of this video can be done. This is your Polaris throttle position sensor adjustment, and the main thing I forgot to say is that way down there, There's our uh, throttle. You need to back off. You need to take off. I just come up here, release your throttle cable, and back off that lock nut and set screw all the way 
so that your throttle can go to its true home zero. And that happens before you come over here to your throttle position sensor and rotate that to do anything. And you even need to do that before you uh, even just test this to see that see where your throttle position sensor is. It needs to go all the way back so it can read 700. After you get 700, or if you get 700, you come back up here and you set that screw and you dial that up until you're at 940 millivolts. That's your idle position. So, as I said before, my throttle position sensor was pretty far off. If I recall, it was in the 800 somethings. My idle was low, but I didn't measure that before I started. Uh, and the main reason I did this was because I was having a low idle on startup in the mountains, and I'd have to blip the throttle to get things powered up, and it was a little boggy. This weekend, I went riding, and I'm very pleased with the results. Right off the bat, dead cold start is now two poles instead of a very consistent three. So one pole to prime the electronics and stuff, and one pole, and it starts right up. Um, I had zero issues with the slag idling low on startup uh, or anything like that in the mountains, and it had zero bogging issues. I felt it ran smoother and cleaner. Uh, so if you're having some small sort of issues, don't be afraid to uh, dive into this project. It's pretty easy as far as things go. It may cost you a little bit to invest in a good multimeter, but you can use a good multimeter on so many things, not just on sleds, but in your uh, daily life that you should own one. Anyways, I'm really pleased with the way this turned out, and uh, I didn't have to pay a dealer a couple hundred bucks to dink with it, and it took, I could do it in an hour now. So, after the first time will take you two hours, I could do this in an hour now.